Your list starts now. What's the technique to throw a strike every time? Bowling is better when you hit the pins. Simple pointers to help keep you out of the gutter. Plus, Mr. Claus isn't hanging out in the North Pole. Three unique Santa celebrations in some unusual places across America. But first, when it comes to gifts, sometimes parents know best. It's not being tested in a lab. It's not by editors of a magazine. Three holiday presents that could be great for the kiddos. That's at the top of our list right now. Hey folks, I'm Shaguna Dulo. And I'm Christina Guerrero. All right, if you're looking for a great last minute gift for the littles in your life, asking parents might be a great bet. Our Jimmy Rhodes found a holiday gift guide that does exactly that. It's made by parents, for parents, and it's our featured story at the top of the list. When you want real-world advice on gifts for your family, parents trust other parents. Moms love to tell you what they love about a product and what they hate about a product. That's why Sharon Vindereen founded Parent Tested, Parent Approved, which ships out products for review. We have over 150,000 families in our network. And every year, based on that huge volume of unfiltered feedback, they come up with a list of top products for holiday gift giving. We're running them down, starting with games. For your younger kids, Buffalo Games Chuckle and Roar imprint has red light green light which we're all familiar with and they've included a three foot long racetrack board with customizable cars that your preschoolers will love to stick stickers on it runs about 10 bucks and what could be better than bubble wrap bubble wrap that never wears out pop it is completely addictive you cannot put this thing down good luck you're just gonna spend all your time popping it pop it costs about eight bucks and then they have shape makers seven magnetic shapes that you attach to these puzzles there are 48 different challenges and that's retailing for about $15 fellow parents also have advice for educational fun with the reading eggs program this is for children aged 2 to 13 so a really broad range so it's self-paced lessons, it's completely interactive phonics games, and there's even rewards to keep the kids excited about it. It's fun and effective. It's been developed by elementary educators with over 30 years of experience, and it is scientifically proven to increase reading levels in just over 15 minutes a day. A book pack runs about $15. Okay, these have all been about having a good time, but here's a product that lets you be your family's fun governor, the Circle Home Plus. This is the easiest way to manage screen time on all of your family's devices. It's easy to set up. No technical skills required. It is literally plug and play. And then you use the app to manage screen time for the entire family. You can set individual rules for different kids. So my 15 year old might be able to use the internet until 11 o'clock where my 14 year old, his internet turns off at 10 o'clock. The Circle Home Plus runs about $90. Gift giving that's parent tested, parent approved is at the top of the list. Well, you know, one thing parents love about the holidays, at least I'll speak for myself, telling the kids that Santa knows if they've been naughty or nice. And if you think you have to head to the mall to present proof of Santa to them, think again. Heidi Fogelsong is showing us some of the unusual Santa sightings across America. <laughs> Sometimes the reindeer and sleigh routine just isn't enough for jolly old Saint Nick. Lately, he's been making some pretty grand entrances, as we discovered in our search of Santa sightings across America. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! First destination, the snowy mountains in Big Sky, Montana, where this skiing Santa is showing off some big time tricks on the slopes. Yeah, this guy can shred some serious powder and still have time to visit with the kids to find out if they've been naughty or nice. It's all part of Big Sky Resort's annual Christmas celebration where ski lovers get to enjoy the holiday season doing what they love most. We actually have been skiing for the past like four hours, but it's been snowy and windy and cold. So we took a break and now the sun is out. You can ski with Santa, be part of Big Sky's annual Christmas stroll and enjoy a variety of really fun winter festivities on Christmas Eve in the Treasure State. Ho, ho, ho! Next, we cross the country and head south to the Tar Heel State, Asheville, North Carolina, where we spy Santa rappelling down the biggest chimney we've ever seen, Chimney Rock State Park. Let's go meet Santa. Apparently, Santa gets roped into this stunt every season. Chimney Rock State Park is also one of the most popular places to hike and tour any time of year. Santa, Cocoa Beach. 
Our final Santa sighting is seeing more than double vision at Cocoa Beach, Florida. We're talking lots of Santas surfing the waves and a few elves, too. Bring your funky friends and your funky family. Surfing Santas is an annual Christmas Eve day party that brings hundreds of surfers of all ages to dress up and ride into the holiday fun. So you better watch out. Santa could come skiing, rappelling, and surfing his way into your holiday season ho, ho, ho. across America. In addition to stopping for Santa sightings, why not plan to visit a place you've never been? That's right, we're gearing up to welcome a new decade of travel. It's our first story, Trending Now. Somewhere in America, a train is boarding. Well, whether traveling by trains, planes, or automobiles, folks filled with wanderlust will be vacationing in unique ways in 2020. And according to preferred hotels and resorts, this upcoming year, millennials will be opting for micro-cations, aka a trip lasting less than four nights. And all generations will be trying out transformational travel, which means intentionally traveling to stretch, learn, and grow. Travel is a search. And we're all looking for a world that's not like ours. And international trips aren't off the books entirely. Preferred Hotels predicts Japan, Denmark, and Mexico will be hot destinations in 2020. The one thing about taking a vacation, you gotta pack for different dinners, activities, and weather. Or do you, Shagoon? Mm. Fashion on the fly is at number two. Rent the Runway is the closet you always wanted, but you never knew you could have. It's just the ability to rent your clothes. And renting your clothes while on vacation means packing's a breeze. When checking into certain W hotels, guests can pay 69 bucks that'll get them four looks from Rent the Runway. I rent shorts, I rent crop tops, I rent, I've even rented um, a sweatpants and a sweatshirt to wear for like lounging on the weekend. So don't worry, the service won't send you a crop top while in Colorado in the winter. They curate looks based on the area's climate and surrounding activities. Right now, this service is only available in Aspen, South Beach, Washington, D.C., and Hollywood, but the company plans on expanding to more hotel locations. All right, our final trending topic involves exploring Ohio. A Christmas story sleepover is at number three. Fragile. It must be Italian. Well, I think that says fragile. Yes, the old man was a huge fan of his fishnet leg lamp and fans of A Christmas Story can see it in all its window glory. You can make overnight reservations at the Cleveland home where the movie was filmed. And bonus, across the street, is a museum filled with movie memorabilia. Going through the house definitely, I replay the movie in my head because I watch it even when it's not Christmas time. Fans of the film will remember that neighbor with all the hounds running around. Well, guess what? You can pop next door and stay there too. Can't make it during the holiday season? No worries. They accept reservations all year long. Check them out at achristmasstoryhouse.com. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Christina, this movie is such a Christmas classic. You know, I wonder if you can sleep in the bunny onesie. If you do that, Shagoon, that would be a sight to see. Yes, indeed. And that's what's <laughs> trending now. Coming up on the list. Makes your heart swell up a little bit. Celebrities getting social. New ways some stars are talking to their fans. Plus, six decades of Christmas movies for the whole family to enjoy. Some getting fancy with their remakes. And thousands of years of fruitcake. How the infamous dessert gained fame and four other fruity facts about this candied cake. That's all up next on the list. Welcome back, folks. Now, maybe you think it shouldn't be called a sport if you can do it while eating curly fries and drinking a beer, but bowling is surprisingly difficult. Luckily, we have pointers to help you bowl like a pro or at least look a little better in those funky shoes. So line them up for Bowling 101. Grab a bowling ball, because we're hitting the alley. Bowling's not that complicated, Josh. No, it isn't, but there's a couple things that you should know before you go into every bowling alley to help improve your game. For some key pointers, we turn to Josh Mullins of Bolero. First up, 
find your perfect bowling ball. There's a good general rule of thumb about 10% of your body weight is a good starting point to find a ball that fits your hand and your body type. Wow, so then I would need like a 20 pound ball. Yeah, if they made it. 16 is the heaviest okay, thing you cool. go. All right, so a 16 pound ball is what I need. Yes, absolutely. Besides the weight, Josh says you have to find the right fit for your fingers. Just go around, put your hand in it, find one that feels a little comfortable, matches the gripping pressure points, you know, where you're going to be holding on to the ball. Okay. Looks pretty good. All right. Next, we're keeping it rolling with learning the basic lingo. Strikes, spares, what do I need to know? So strike is obviously the objective. 12 of those is a perfect 300. Okay. Now, if you don't get all 10 in your first try, your second try, you get all 10, that's the spare. Everything after that just counts towards your score. Getting a spare can be hard depending on where the pins end up after your first throw. For example, you could end up with a split, which means... A pin missing in between two remaining pins, okay. two or more. Like literally it means that there's pins split on Absolutely. either side. And of course, everyone's favorite, the gutter. The gutter ball, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm learning, I'm getting there. Finally, learn to throw the perfect shot. So you want to start with the ball obviously in your dominant hand. Your first step will be with your non-dominant foot. And you just want to have a nice free swing and let it fall and fall forward, let it go towards your target. That's not hard. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, then how come I throw gutter balls? <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it right now. To put our lesson to the test. All right, Josh, show me how it's done. Josh and I went head to head. Oh, that ladies and gentlemen is a strike. My turn. Yes. Okay, I'm no kingpin, but I'm working on it. Keep calm and bowl on with Bowling 101. All right, excellent victory dance and nice form, Shagoon. Well, thank you, Christine. I mean, look, I threw a few strikes and rolled some gutter balls, too. Yeah, definitely comes with the territory, kind of like social media. You find influencers, vacation pics, and lots and lots <laughs> of cats. But it causes a big buzz when famous folks join in the fun. Teresa Strasser has a favorite friend and other celebs who joined Instagram this year, and they're on the buzz list. Teresa. Thanks, guys. 2019 was a big year for celebrities jumping on the gram. At number one, Jennifer Aniston. Since she joined in October, she's amassed over 20 million followers. Her first post, this kind of blurry but kind of perfect Friends reunion photo. So many people wanted to be this friend's friend. Her following grew to 1 million in 5 hours and 16 minutes, setting a Guinness World Record. So why did she finally join? Jimmy Kimmel got the answer. <laughs> Who talked you into this? I don't know. A lot of people <laughs> yeah. just got tired of... of you know, what you resist persists, so what the hey? I'm just trying to build content. I see. As they say. And with her already working on season two of Apple TV's The Morning Show, she is building content online and in real life. At number two, Matthew McConaughey. Since he joined Instagram last month, he's racked up almost two million followers, posting photos that celebrate our troops and his beloved college football team, the Texas Longhorns. The Oscar-winning actress first post this video, telling people what they can expect from his feed. Seeing if, uh, if who I am translates, if what I want to share translates, if it tickles your funny bone, if it makes you think a second, if it makes your heart swell up a little bit, if it makes you take a quiet moment for a walk and go, I gotta check in with the M and the E. Hopefully all those things. Hopefully the occasional troll will leave him neither dazed nor confused. And third on our list of Instagram's most famous additions this year, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. The couple now has around 10 million followers who get to see them doing good and let's face it, looking good. But the profile also features socially conscious content like this video. Today is International Day of the Girl. Every girl has potential. She has promise. She has the right to learn, the right to be heard the right to play and to discover. It is said that girls with dreams become women with vision. That gets a big old like from us, welcoming big names to the gram on the buzz list. That's so cool. You know, I love that some celebs use their Instagram for fantastic causes, not just pimping their next project. Yeah, no, it can be a great way to promote awareness and raise money to help people. That's right. Lots more of the list is still to come, so stay with us. Welcome back. 
If you're looking for a family-friendly holiday movie to enjoy with the kids, there's no shortage, so how do you decide? Well, we suggest going with an iconic one that is so popular. It's inspired sequels, remakes, and even musicals. And we look at four of them keeping the holidays merry. It's on the hot list. Let's go. The first family-friendly holiday movie on our list, Elf. How long do you think you'll be with us? I was thinking, like, forever. This 2003 comedy stars Will Ferrell as a human raised by elves who travels from the North Pole to find his dad and, of course, spread Christmas cheer. It's since inspired a stop-motion animated TV special and a live musical still touring worldwide to this day. It was just spectacular. I mean, it is Christmas in a show. And the next movie on our list has also inspired a live musical version, A Christmas Story. That's what I thought you said. This 1983 family comedy about Ralphie's incredibly memorable holiday season was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry in 2012. That is the most precious thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> That's the same year the live musical kicked off, and in 2017, A Christmas Story Live on Fox starring Matthew Broderick and Maya Rudolph debuted as well. Say cheese! The next family-friendly movie hasn't inspired a musical version, but it has been followed by four sequels. It's Home Alone. What else could we be forgetting? Our troubles will be ours. Kevin! In this Oscar-nominated 1990 comedy, Macaulay Culkin's character is home alone for the holidays and is forced to defend his home from burglars. It was the highest grossing live action comedy film of all time until 2011. Keep the change, you filthy animal. And the final holiday movie on our list has also inspired lots of follow-ups. It's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch did not. Can you believe it's been more than 50 years since we first saw The Grinch in this holiday special from back in 1966? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. The classic Dr. Seuss tale also hit the big screen in 2000 with Jim Carrey as the iconic character, and most recently in 2018 with Benedict Cumberbatch taking the lead. Ho, ho, ho. Holiday flicks the whole family can enjoy on the hot list. You know, Shagoon, we're already on a holiday movie kick at my house. We've watched three of these four movies already. Well, for me, it's simple. It's Home Alone, that's it, that's the standard. That's all you need, right? That's it. We will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, friends. All right, ugly holiday sweaters, the same 12 songs over and over, and your tipsy Aunt Marge. There are certain holiday staples you either love or hate, and perhaps no dividing line is more controversial than the fruitcake. Jimmy Rhodes has five things you didn't know about the insanely dense dessert that inspires as many wisecracks as cravings. Ah, the fruitcake. You either love it or hate it. The first thing you didn't know about fruitcake, the tradition. Julius Caesar enjoyed fruitcake. Uh, early recipes from the Roman times mention cakes baked with pine nuts, pomegranate seeds, and raisins. Fast forward to the 18th century. Compared to what most people were eating, like mutton and heaping mounds of seasoned dirt, the ingredients in fruitcake were expensive, so they marked very special occasions like holidays or weddings. From tradition to tragedy. Next, the fruitcakes fall from grace. You know there's only one fruitcake in the whole world? and people keep sending it to each other. <laughs> the mass production of the fruitcake led to its demise. That and the taste and the texture, the smell's not so great either. I think the most disappointing cake has to be fruit cake, you know? You think that would be better? It doesn't add up. Fruit, good, cake, great, fruit cake, nasty crap. The third thing you didn't know about fruit cake, the shelf life. To start this cake, I'm adding a kilo of mixed dried fruit to the saucepan. All the other ingredients last forever. Dried nuts? Check. Candied fruit? It's basically mummified fruit. And then there's the booze, say rum or whiskey, which actually gets better with age. The USDA says it'll last up to three months in the fridge and a year in the freezer. Really good. Oh, yay. Which brings us to our next fact, the oldest fruitcake. How old is this fruitcake? <laughs> is 134 years old. It was baked in 1878. 
Now, that video was taken seven years ago, so the fruitcake's even older now. It's been passed down for four generations. But the final fact you might not know about fruitcakes, the many purposes. I do not normally toss fruitcakes, but when I do, I toss them at the Manitou Springs Great Fruitcake Toss. That's right, each year in Manitou Springs, Colorado, a fruitcake toss is held with competitions for accuracy, speed, and distance. <laughs> and that's five things you didn't know about the most beloved and hated holiday treat. Some fascinating facts about fruitcake, and I can honestly say I've actually never had fruitcake before. Is that your not so subtle way of asking for fruitcake this Christmas? Well, I'll try anything once, so sure, bring it on.